Any new amateur radio operators first work with voice. There are many features you can get by working with computer data, however. We're going to show what you need to get started with computer data using the FL Digi application. Just getting started, stick around. Black one, black one. Today we're not going to go through everything in the FL Digi application. We're just going to point out that you can get the application. We're going to have some links down below for you to get to the source code. If you're interested, being able to download for whichever platform you're working with, we're going to give you some pointers for some of the things to see in the application and some things that might help you to get started. And of course, some encouragement to get going. Or if you are already using FL Digi, some encouragement to get others to join you in doing the same thing. We've talked on this channel several times about using digital signals, and we have shown how the Black Swan Net and its predecessor, the Buckeye Net Mixed, were able to work. FL Digi is a fantastic application, it is free. We have a lot of options available with this wonderful application and some of the applications related to it. We have shown how we are able to work with text. We can also work with images as we have shown on this channel. Today we're not going to go into all of the details about what you can do with FL Digi. We just want to introduce you to the application, point out a couple of the fundamental features to help you get started in using it yourself if you haven't already. If you are already using FL Digi, we hope that you will reach out to those in your clubs and in your Aries or Oxcom teams to help them to come up to speed because this is an increasingly important component of what we are doing in amateur radio, especially as it relates to emergency communication. We're going to go to the configure menu and that's going to bring us an option for a configure dialog box. We'll bring that over into the screen and we're going to see some critical items under miscellaneous. The operator station uh, is going to be where we want to put in our call sign and some fundamental details that are going to show up as we see later in macros. One of the first things we need to do is to establish rig control. It's going to be uh, not necessary, strictly speaking, but make your life a lot easier if FL Digi is able to control the rig. As you're able to see from this configuration, I use FL Rig. It's a related application that is used to communicate with the radio directly. FL Digi and FL Rig speak to each other over a local network connection, and that's how they are able to make sure that they stay synchronized in terms of which VFO it's on, which frequency it's on, which mode it's on, and so on. FL Rig is going to give you all of the options that you are going to use commonly for being able to control the rig. Adjusting a mode, for example, is very straightforward. You can turn on and off noise reduction. Uh, you can actually tune uh, the rig so that you'll get a good match with your antenna. Uh, that'll kick off the uh, auto tuner that you have. And you can turn on the noise blanker. Uh, you can even hit push to talk and get a transmission started that way. So critical items that you need for controlling uh, the fundamental elements are all available. And there's also a menu that will pop down some more things like uh, options for flipping to another band and so on. We can talk about FL Rig at a later time if it makes sense to do so. Having control of the rig will be nice for being able to move automatically to particular frequencies we need, although technically you can actually do that by hand. Critically, you're going to need to make sure for the purpose of managing your digital signals, you have to have both the input and the output correctly set. In this case, I have a device that is connected to my computer that will present a, a USB uh, host and it's going to identify itself as the USB audio codec. So I'm able to make sure that both my input to FL Digi and my output from FL Digi are correctly set. Once I have that, we can see in the FL Digi window several different parts that are of that window, some panes that we have. Down there in the blue, we are able to type what we want. That's going to be our transmit pane. 
And if we know the right bindings, we can actually right from there hit control T and it will start to transmit. Hit control R at the end and that'll mean go back into receive mode, which is to say stop transmitting. As we get back up to the top here, we can see we've got a bunch of these buttons. You probably aren't going to see this the very first time that you're running it. That, that is going to be a group of macros. Let's turn that off. That's probably more likely what you see. Going back to the view menu, and we can go to the view hide 48 macros, and there they go again. So macros are options that we have where you can basically just push one of those buttons and it will cause an event or a series of events to happen directly from there. We can also see the relationships between the frequency, the offset that we have down the bottom, and then the frequency as it shows. That's going to be the frequency, the center frequency of our digital emission, which is going to be important. We talked about that especially in episode 60, where we were talking about the 60 meter, 5 megahertz interoperability channels. Going back up to our macros again, we see that we've got a couple of options. There is by default these uh, T slash R, that's transmit slash receive. That's a toggle back and forth. We also have some that will do things like uh, populate some things in the uh, transmit pane. And the me slash QTH, that's going to give some basic information. It's going to be pulled out of that configuration that we had in the first place. If we hit that TX macro and we can see the two arrows, that shows that it's going to keep sending. There's no end there. If we typed some more stuff, it would just continue. On the other hand, if we hit that TX with the arrow and then the line showing a, a stop to it, an end, what we're able to see is that it will put in DE, our call sign, and a K. In fact, we can even fill up whatever it is we're going to send in our transmit pane and then hit that TX button with the end on it and it will send all of that at once. There's no need for us to start transmit and then separately to hit something that is going to say end the transmission. If we right click on any of these macros, we're able to see what they're made of. And in fact, we can go find ourselves one that is not populated right click on it and we can edit that macro so in this case there is no macro there it's empty so we can go ahead and build one well, the first time you do this it's probably not going to be exactly correct don't worry about it uh, the important thing is to engage with it and see how to get what it is that you want there are many options as you can see that will include things like your name, your call sign, your location, also the other guy's name, call sign, and whatever else that is going to be uh, sent over to you. And you can see those items up in the top center where it says call, QTH, and op. Uh, down below our frequency, uh, that's going to be the other side uh, of, the tr of the conversation. And so those, if populated, will also be reachable via macros. Now here's an interesting one, WX for getting weather data. We can select it, hit that left arrow so that we will move the macro from the right side and put it over in the left side where the macro text is happening. We can type in a DE, that's going to be very literal. And then again, find my call, hit that left arrow and then WX DE my call. That's now what we're going to have inside of this macro bunch of other options in here including even the ability to set the particular modem that we're going to use but we're not going to go into that right now we just want to show there are a lot of options here uh, we don't need to get lost by trying to deal with all of them so it turns out when we've got our macro we're going to want to make sure that we put it into receive mode at the end and well we probably should make it so that we transmit at the beginning too for something like this in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're setting the macro up so that when we hit the button, it's going to kick the rig into transmit mode. It's then going to get the weather data. It's then going to add the DE, our call sign, and then it is going to kick the rig back into receive mode. That is to say, let go of push to talk. Here we can see what happens when I hit the button. Well, it pulls in Port Columbus International Airport, and we get a METAR report. Of course, one of the other things that we can do with this is we can flip over to WWV, and we can see, well, we've got that coming in. How does it sound? Fantastic. Great. Also, we can see 
how well are we doing? If our radio has a uh, drifting uh, VFO, then we would be able to tell that from here. We'd be able to see that line that's running parallel to that green line. It would not be parallel. It would actually be drifting one way or the other. Some other fun options are we can go and find a weather radio fax frequency. In this case, I've picked up 9108.1. Weather faxes traditionally have an offset of 1900 hertz. So if you are listening on a particular weather fax frequency, you'll occasionally hear voice and it will come through clearly if you are tuned this way. But at 1900 uh, hertz centered is where that uh, weather fax is going to come in. So in this case, we can see it's coming in. We get an idea of what's going on out there with the ocean weather. And it looks like this, the reception isn't terrible, but it's also not great. We can flip over to another one of the frequencies and see how things are going in that case. Well, this looks like it's a little bit better to me. Now, we can take a look at the filters and the options that we have here. Up in the top left below the large frequency counter, we have some options for the mode of the radio that we're using. In this case, we're using USB data and we have a filter width that's in place. In this case, it's set for 3000 Hertz. And you can see that down at the bottom, the waterfall covers 3000 Hertz. Now, if I'm going to uh, be picking something up that I know is more narrow than that, I don't need to listen to all of that kind of stuff. But if, in fact, uh, I've got something that's wide, I need to make sure that I have my filter set up so that it's wide enough to catch the signal that I want. So those are just a couple of examples of things that you're able to do with FL Digi. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do share this video with others. Help them to see what they're missing if they're not already engaged. Help them to find the help. Help them to get configured so that they're able to get on the air and to operate digitally as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss any of our content. Like the video if you found it helpful. And we'll see you in an upcoming video. Until then, this is Radio KD8TTE, out.